We are on the march. The empire is on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. In the second hour, we've got Mike Cernovich coming on to talk about the drama in the alt-right movement. We had the Atlantic basically go to a neo-Nazi conference last weekend. They threw up Sig Heil hand salutes. And basically now the alt-right is neo-Nazis. They've completely demonized it. Will this split up the alt-right? You can see the video there. We're going to play it again in full later. Will this split the alt-right? Will this end the alt-right? Is this a huge victory for the mainstream media, for fake news? Or can we recover from this? Can we delineate what represents the true alt-right, the true Trump movement, given that Donald Trump has now disavowed at least this individual group? We're going to talk about that with Mike Cernovich. Alex Jones will be joining us provisionally at the bottom of the hour. He's got a lot of things to discuss. Of course, they're talking about Mitt Romney still being Secretary of State. This is floating around. We had Kellyanne Conway kind of disavow that yesterday, suggesting that it wouldn't happen. But it's still floating around there. Some people on the Trump train say they're going to get off if Mitt Romney is announced as Secretary of State not because of his insults, because he insulted Donald Trump on the campaign trail, but because of his record, because of the fact that he basically led the Never Trump movement. So we're going to get into all that. We're going to get into the Washington Post has come out once again and said that Infowars is fake news. But not only that, they're now saying that all these fake news websites, including Infowars, including Zero Hedge, including Breitbart, are all run from the Kremlin and that the entire fake news scandal is a contrivance of the Russian government. Massive Washington Post article. We're going to completely eviscerate it here in the first hour. But first, this is the crucial news. And it's kind of interesting because a lot of Trump supporters are very laid back over this. They don't really see it as a problem. They see it as theater. And that is Jill Stein of the Green Party has basically raised the money at this point. She's announced, in fact, AP just reported Jill Stein will request recount in Wisconsin. A local party official says the Green Party presidential candidate Jill Stein will request a recount in Wisconsin. Basically, in little over 40 hours, in fact, little over 24 hours, they raised an amount over $4.8 million to have a recount in Wisconsin. And it looks like a recount in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Of course, you will notice that those three states are the three states which Trump won narrowly. Isn't it interesting that in the interest of having a fair and ethical vote, they're only doing a vote recount in states that Trump won? Even though Hillary won in states such as New Hampshire, Nevada, with far narrow, narrower margins than Trump won in Pennsylvania. Yeah, out of these three states where they're doing the recount, and it looks like they're going to raise enough money to do so, they're all states in which Trump narrowly won. Of course, this is off the back of a meeting between computer scientists and the Clinton campaign last week where they're trying to get them to call officially from the Clinton campaign for a recount. And then, lo and behold, Jill Stein emerges out of nowhere and says, oh, by the way, we want a recount. What's going on here? There's certain people who are very, very concerned about this. They point to the bizarre methods in which the money's being raised. It seems to be added on in a uniform, bot-like fashion. Again, she raised over $3 million for her entire campaign. Months and months of campaign financing only amounted to $3 million. Yet she was able to raise over $4.8 million in little over 24 hours. But, you know, a lot of people, a lot of respected people, people like Bill Mitchell have said that this is just theatre. It's nothing to worry about. I think it is something to worry about. Given what we saw with Brexit, they immediately tried to steal this from us. Are they going to try and steal it from Trump? We'll be back on The Alex Jones Show after the break. Infowars.com. We'll be right back. We are live. This is the Alex Jones Show, Friday, November 25th. Alex Jones will be coming up at the bottom of the hour. But just to set the table here, and we're going to get onto this article, which is up on Infowars.com, is Jill Stein's recount an attempt to steal the election from Hillary? As I said before the break, some of the same Trump supporters who were very concerned about vote fraud before the election 
are surprisingly relaxed about this new recount in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania set to take place over the next week. In fact, AP reports that they are set to file before today's 5 p.m. deadline in Wisconsin for a recount of the vote. And again, people seem very lackadaisical about it. I mean, if they could rig the election, how couldn't they rig this recount? I mean, given the fact that the Clinton campaign has met personally with these computer scientists who claim that there are anomalies in the way the, vo the votes were counted, in the way they were tallied by electronic voting machines. Of course, small problem with that in Michigan, they don't use electronic voting machines. And Jill Stein can't seem to answer that. She can't seem to answer the question, which I've put to her several times now, as to why these recounts are only taking place in states that Trump won. Let's go to my video, which went up last night. This is about Jill Stein's recount. Let's roll that video. So the temper tantrums failed, the rioting and smashing up cities failed, and sending death threats to electors failed. Now Hillary supporters, encouraged by Jill Stein's fundraising campaign, are demanding a recount in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. They spent months sniping about how evil and dangerous Trump was for saying he might not immediately accept the election results. He refused to say that he would respect the results of this election. Now, make no mistake, by doing that, he is threatening our democracy. And the peaceful transition, the peaceful transition of power is one of the things that sets us apart. It's how we hold our country together, no matter who's in charge. Now they're refusing to accept the election results. Donald Trump refused to say that he respect the results of this election. That's a direct threat to our democracy. So by Hillary's own logic, her supporters, along with Jill Stein, are now a direct threat to democracy. So when the right talks about vote fraud, it's a direct threat to democracy. But when the left does it, it's ethical. But Hillary won the popular vote. What are you afraid of? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the fact that she's a lying, corrupt sociopath. Maybe the fact that her entire campaign was backed by an establishment that wouldn't hesitate to exploit a recount to carry out the vote fraud that they thought they didn't need on election day. The Clinton campaign has already held meetings with computer scientists who claim that there are anomalies between votes cast on electronic voting machines and those cast by paper ballots. Yeah, one problem with that, Michigan didn't even use electronic voting machines. And as Nate Silver, hardly a Trump supporter, has documented, these so-called anomalies completely disappear when you factor in demographics. This whole thing was already debunked before it even began. Is Hillary Clinton willing to risk civil war in America by installing herself as part of a coup? Now, this is all a long shot, but it just goes to illustrate how the left only professes its love for democracy when they're winning. As soon as they start losing, they have a hissy fit of epic proportions. We saw the exact same thing after Brexit, and they're still trying to derail that, pissing all over the democratic will of the British people. Jill Stein also keeps raising the amount they're asking for to fund this recount every time it's met. Could this just be one huge money-making scam? And why is Jill Stein pushing this? Is it to try and regain some lefty street cred because she was vaguely supportive of Trump during the campaign? If so, that's pathetic. Seriously, Jill Stein said that a Hillary presidency would mean nuclear war. And now she's throwing Hillary a lifeline. Under Hillary Clinton, we could slide into nuclear war very quickly. The deadline for demanding a recount in these three states is almost up. The Wisconsin deadline is tomorrow. In Pennsylvania, it's Monday. And Michigan is Wednesday next week. If they extend those deadlines to cater for this campaign, then you know the fix is in. So listen up, crybaby butthurt losers. No matter how many times you recount the votes, Hillary will still have lost. No matter how many death threats you send to electors, Hillary will still have lost. No matter how many boo-hoo whining temper tantrums you have, Hillary will still have lost no matter how many cities you smash up hillary will still have lost you lost your entire ideology has been rejected go home lick your wounds and listen to people like bernie sanders who explained 
why you lost because no one resonates with you constantly shoving identity politics down people's throats it doesn't work anymore your era is finished it's done now wipe the blubbering tears from your face step aside and let the adults get on with making america great again okay that video went up last night. Here is the latest at the Associated Press. Jill Stein will request recount in Wisconsin. Green Party says the article states under Wisconsin law, Stein's campaign must show a basis for the recount in that state and cover costs. So they need to show a basis for the recount, yet they haven't shown any basis whatsoever. Is the vote tight? Was it tight in Wisconsin? Yes, but it was tight in Nevada. It was tight in New Hampshire. It was tight in other states, yet there's no recount taking place in states where Hillary won. This is what Jill Stein said to PBS yesterday, quote, This is not being done to benefit one candidate at the expense of the other. So if that's the case, Jill, why are you only fundraising to conduct recounts in states where Trump won? How many times do we need to ask that question? Haven't received an answer thus far. Hillary won New Hampshire, Minnesota, and Nevada by fewer votes than Trump won Pennsylvania, but there will be no recount in any of those three states. Why is it only happening in the states that Trump won? So Trump won Pennsylvania by 78,000 votes. And that's what Jill Stein aims to have a recount. She aims to have a recount in Pennsylvania. Their deadline is tomorrow. The Wisconsin deadline is today. Michigan deadline is Wednesday in all of those three states. They want a recount. So Trump beat Hillary by 78,000 votes in Pennsylvania. Yet Clinton only won New Hampshire by less than 3,000 votes. She won Minnesota by less than 44,000 votes and Nevada by around 26,000 votes. So in all three cases, in all three states where she narrowly defeated Trump, she won by a significantly smaller margin than what Trump had over Hillary in Pennsylvania. So why are we having a recount in Pennsylvania when these three blue states were significantly tighter on election night? And why hasn't Jill Stein answered that question? Again, this happened. This didn't just emerge out of the blue independently via Jill Stein. This happened after these computer scientists met with Hillary Clinton's campaign. They had a conference call with spirit cooking spooky podesta a week ago this is where this started so now they're trying to claim that it's all jill stein's work again is that to, to contain the backlash is that to prevent charges that by leading this recount initiative hillary would be a sore loser jill stein seems to have taken it on and again they're talking about evidence that the vote was hacked in these three states how can a vote be hacked in Michigan when it wasn't conducted on electronic voting machines? This is the quote from Chris Thomas. Listen to this. He's the director of Michigan's Bureau of Elections. He told the Detroit Free Press, we are an entire paper and optical scan state. So the only electronic version of this vote is where you fill in the paper ballot and then have it scanned by an optical scanner. There's no electronic voting machine. They didn't use any in the presidential election in Michigan. He went on to say, quote, nothing is connected to the Internet. So, again, the claim that this could have been hacked completely debunked on the face of it. And on top of that, they already counted the vote twice in Michigan. And when I put this out on Twitter last night, there were a few leftists, a few Hillary supporters like, no, that's not true. Well, yes, it is. They had the quick count, which was conducted on the night of the election, announced on the morning of the 9th. They then had a second certified count, which was conducted. They only just released the final results of that yesterday, and Trump won by 10,700 votes. So they already had two counts in Michigan. If they have a third count, given that this is a state which does not use electronic voting machines, if they have a third count, Oh, and lo and behold, we've just discovered all these new paper ballots in the name of Hillary. I mean, that is going to stink to high heaven. And again, it's only happening in states that Trump won. You've also got, again, the fact that Trump supporters seem very, very lackadaisical about this. 
They don't seem to really think that this is a threat. All the top Trump people on, on Twitter that I've looked at aren't very concerned about this. Over at the Donald Reddit, they are more concerned about it. And questions are also swirling as to how Stein managed to raise such a whopping sum of money, which is now $4.8 million in such a short space of time, given that her entire campaign only raised $3 million. Obviously, you've got a lot of butthurt Hillary supporters that are donating to that. But again, $4.8 million in a little over 24 hours. I mean, do we have George Soros's hand involved in this? Do we have big Hillary donors involved in this? And again, using Jill Stein as a fallback to take the flak. But in fact, they had other experts analyze the claims made by the computer scientists who claimed that there were anomalies between the electronic voting machine ballots and the paper ballots. And even they said that there was no evidence here. So again, Wisconsin law states there needs to be evidence, not just funding, not just you prove you can pay for a recount. You need to have actual evidence that there was fraud. They have none. We'll be back to discuss it after this break. Don't go away. We are back live on the Alex Jones Show. Alex Jones will be coming up with his take on this recount, which people seem to be very relaxed about. I doubt Alex is relaxed about it, and rightly so. I'm certainly not either. But before we get back into the news, I want to tell you about our specials at InfoWarsStore.com because we've got an amazing discount right now. Silver Bullet, colloidal silver at just $9.95. This price will only be held for the next 24 hours. That's $9.95 for Silver Bullet, colloidal silver. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is finally here following Alex's extensive search for a powerful colloidal silver product that is free of artificial additives. No crap in this. We try to get the purest solutions possible and utilizes high quality processes to ensure for a truly unique product that has applications for both preparedness and regular use. Again, 737 reviews, independent reviews, 4.8 out of 5. I mean, that is huge. Seven, if you went on Amazon.com and you saw 4.8 out of 737 independent reviews, that is high praise indeed. And it's only 9.95. That is huge. Normally retails for 29.95. So you've got a $20 saving on Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver right now at InfoWarsStore.com. You've also got BrainForce Plus, which I need to get my hands on. And again, I took, I used to take uh, Joe Rogan's product, which was similar, but this is even better. And I'm guessing that Brain Force is even a, a, a boost on top of that. In fact, I took two of these right before the show. I've got it right here. This is the ordinary Brain Force that we had before. Now we've got Brain Force Plus. And again, this enhances cognitive thinking. This enables you to get tasks done quicker. If you're a public speaker, it enables you to speak more clearly. Again, you could use this even in social situations. People go out, they have brain fog, they've got people talking at them from all different directions. This really clears up your mind, enables you to speak more clearly. Again, it's Brain Force Plus 2096. Again, huge savings, 1899 savings. That's a, over 47% saving. That is extremely reasonable. In fact, other products, similar products, which aren't even as good, I've seen them go for as much as double what we're offering BrainForce Plus for at InfoWarsStore.com. So again, it's not just about getting great products that have independent five-star reviews, replete with hundreds of them. It's about supporting this broadcast. You've seen how it's grown so quickly. You've seen how we're now taking on the mainstream media and winning, which is now why they say we're fake news, which we're going to get onto in a moment. But support us, get the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, before we get on to fake news here in the last couple of minutes, we have the Daily Mail reporting Trump transition aides Mull asking Mitt Romney to issue public apology for calling Trump phony and fraud so he can be Secretary of State. This has obviously caused a huge uproar amongst Trump, Trump supporters in the last couple of days. Never Romney was trending on Twitter a couple of days ago, people don't want Mitt Romney as Secretary of State. They don't want him anywhere near a Trump administration. In fact, Cernovich, who's coming up in the next hour, he said that it was basically his line in the sand. He said that if Trump appointed Mitt Romney as Secretary of State, he would have to 
get off the Trump train. Others are saying that that's drama queen behavior, that's going over the top. But again, the narrative here is that, oh, you know, we can't have Mitt Romney because he insulted Donald Trump during the campaign. No, it's not about that. Nobody cares about insults. You know, Ben Carson insulted Trump. Trump insulted a lot of other people who are going to end up in his cabinet. Nobody cares about that. Mitt Romney basically led the Never Trump movement. This is a corrupt, compromised establishment insider who has nothing whatsoever to do with the Trump movement and shouldn't be anywhere near it. This is a guy who vehemently, even more so than Hillary Clinton, wanted to arm jihadist rebels in Syria as far back as 2011. And look at what happened. Look how great that ended up. This is a guy who was pushed basically for a confrontation with Russia. If this guy gets in, this would push us back towards a war with Russia. It would be like Hillary Clinton won the election. And again, he led the Never Trump movement. They almost tried to insert him in the final few months as a ringer to try and derail Trump at the RNC. I mean, Trump won based largely on backlash to Obamacare. Obamacare was based on Romney care. In fact, Mitt Romney himself said, without Romney care, there would be no Obamacare. So again, he's a neocon. He supported the same disastrous policies in the Middle East as, as Hillary Clinton did. He basically led, was the figurehead of the Never Trump movement. Nobody cares about insults. We care about policies. We care about history. We care about legacy. And that's why Mitt Romney should be nowhere near a Trump administration. We'll be back with Alex Jones after the break. Don't go away. And we are back live as negotiations continue over Donald Trump's Secretary of State. They're now saying that it could be Petraeus, of course, a massive, massive backlash against Mitt Romney. It looked like he could be a shoe in Obviously, we know he had that meeting with Trump. But again, Trump's base basically had a fit, revolted against it. A lot of people now saying they're going to jump off the Trump train if he gets Mitt Romney as his Secretary of State. Others are saying that that's an overreaction. We wait and see. We're going to get Alex Jones's comments on that, as well as Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate, now announcing, as of about 30 minutes ago, that she will file for the recount in Wisconsin. It's a 5 p.m. deadline. They're going to file for that recount. It's already funded, and they're well on the way to funding recounts in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Not so interested in having recounts in any of the blue states that Hillary won, in even tighter numbers. A lot of concern over this, but also a lot of Trump people saying that it's nothing to worry about. Alex Jones, do we have Alex? Yes, Paul, I'm here. Alex, are you concerned about the recount? Because I've seen a lot of Trump supporters are saying this is just theater, it's not going to have any impact. If they were so concerned about vote fraud before the election, why shouldn't we be concerned about fraud in a recount? Well, that's why I join you today, Paul, uh, several huge issues to go over. Bev Harris, who, again, is a big Democrat, a big liberal, who exposed the fraud against Al Gore in 2000. I covered it. Clearly, the fraud was against Gore. I hate Gore, uh, but I went with the facts at the time because that was the facts. She is the most highly respected election fraud expert out there. Most of her team are Democrats. We've had a lot of them on computer scientists, you name it, who have discovered how the systematic fraud is happening with the fraction uh, carving, the fraction magic. We had her on the week before the election. We had her on the day after. And she said clearly, uh, in, in a whole bunch of states, but clearly in five states that went for Hillary, they had some precincts with 100% or more of the voters turning out. Well, national turnout was 65%. That's impossible. And in some precincts, Hillary was getting 100% of the 100%, and in other cases, she was getting 100% of all the final votes. So they were stuffing at the end what they needed, and the tsunami of Donald Trump was so gargantuan. She'd have crowds of 300 on average. She'd have crowds of 25,000 on average. It was so gargantuan. She stole the nomination from Sanders, so so much of her base – turned away from her, that they did try to steal it. That's why she didn't come out and do a concession that night. It's why she reportedly attacked her staff, according to CNN and others, and, and uh, had to <clears throat> be restrained. 
All of this was going on. So they were like deer in the headlights. They'd already printed up Newsweek that she was Madam President. This was already a done deal. So absolutely, Jill Stein knew that there was massive backlash against Hillary by Bernie people, so she courted them and made some good points like, hey, if you don't want nuclear war, if you're not going to vote for me, vote for Trump. But now that she's in there, she knows, now that she's lost, she knows that 100 percent of this money she's getting is from big Democratic Party donors, uh, upwards of $7 million. It was $5 million yesterday. $7 million has flooded in to do the recount. They're, they're filing today, as you said, pretty much as we speak. And then the key, we have bigger, anonym, uh, bigger anomalies, as you just pointed out, taking place in all of these blue states where Hillary in the polls was really going to uh, lose. Then magically, there's all of this uh, you know, classic uh, skewing of the vote, all of it in Bev Harris's words against Trump, all of it going against Trump, all of the anomalies against Trump in at least five states that Hillary Clinton clearly stole. Uh, so uh, the, the unfortunate part of this is the media has gone along with the fact that Trump's the winner while playing possum, while Soros has funded all these, we're not accepting him as the president movements, while they've tried to unseat him in the Electoral College, because this is their uh, uh, second sneak attack, basically, uh, that we've witnessed here. First, they tried to steal uh, the situation with the superdelegates. Uh, then they tried to obviously unseat him at the RNC. Uh, then they tried to steal it from him on election night, and now they've done it again. So that's four times total in this election of the last year and twice since election night, election night and now now. So all of it's one side of all of it is against Trump. The top expert says it's against Trump. She clearly stole five states. And then it gets worse. She, on record, had 3 million illegals or non-citizens that voted. That's major studies. Anybody can Google it. They're, they're not uh, denying it. They had at least 4 to 5 million people that were on the death rolls ended up voting. Then they caught people in Colorado, California, Ohio, Florida, uh, Vermont, New York, voting repeatedly, oh, against who? Donald Trump for Hillary. All the fraud, everybody they capture, everybody they catch, everybody they arrest, everybody who gets caught red-handed was being given lists by the Democratic Party of dead people out of the obituaries that linked up with their list of people on the voter rolls, and they got caught. But then it gets worse. We have Project Veritas, not one, not two, but three videos. Kramer, the head of the national movement, his number two guy. And then the head of New York elections admitting that the Democrats are engaged in massive organized uh, fraud, organizing voter fraud via election fraud. So all of this is there. All of this is crystal clear, and I think it's a real threat. I've told folks the battle has just begun. I've had a bad feeling this whole time. They are going after Trump, and basically the Republican Party now has him encircled saying, listen, you play ball with us, or we're not going to let you use the supermajority to get your agenda done, which includes – you know." Uh, Controlling our borders, ending NAFTA, ending GATT, ending TPP, ending the carbon taxes that will really set this country free, cutting taxes on poor people. The list goes on and on. 900 plus seats uh, in state houses. What was it? 16 seats in the Senate, 30 something in the House. Uh, this it was a gigantic victory, a huge tsunami. And so, as you pointed out, the Soros line is. Donald Trump has betrayed us. Donald Trump has betrayed us when he hasn't done any such thing yet so that we pull our support from him as his base. He'll then be forced to fall into the control of the neocons and the mainline Republicans who will be his only supporters. If we stay behind him and wait and see what he actually does via policy once he gets in, then he'll be able to take control of that trifecta, the legislative, the executive, and the judicial, and ram our agenda through. But we cannot sit there and, and, and freak out on Trump until that happens. Now, I personally agree with David Knight, who put out a video saying this pick for Secretary of Education has promoted Common Core. She better come out and give a speech saying she's on board with Trump now and is going to follow his policies, just like Pence did when he first got uh, you know, chosen as his VP. I am concerned, obviously, about Mitt Romney because he said that Trump's a con man and a criminal and, and, and will try to backstab him. But if Trump decides to do that, that's his issue as long as he delivers. But I'll tell you, uh, Petraeus isn't perfect, but he got burned by the CIA when he became their director for actually trying to clean it up. And I have that from insiders. So Petraeus is better. Look, all these people that know how the government works are from the establishment. And Trump's already brought in a lot of outsiders, uh, like Stephen Bannon and others. Uh, but, but what I care about is delivery. And look, stock market's already up. 
He's exposing political correctness. He says he's going to go after NAFTA and GATT and TPP's dead day one and the, and the carbon taxes. So I'm very, very happy at this point. They're putting out the bids to build the wall. Paul Watson, what do you think? Well, what I see, Alex, is people like Michael Moore, people like the Soros groups, people like Media Matters, they're all completely in a panic about what Trump is going to do in just his first few days. They see this onslaught of new bills in just the first few days of a Trump presidency. That's why they're still out today. And Michael Moore was on it was MSNBC yesterday. He said, saying, we must not allow him to take office. Exactly. So if our yeah. enemies are panicking hysterically to keep him out, what does that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? So let me ask you this, Paul. What do you think of the information I have? But obviously he's being advised uh, by uh, his chief of staff, uh, Priebus. He's being advised, obviously, by his son-in-law, who I think is a good guy overall, and others. That the smart move to do is to basically, like old empires would do, old royalty, if you'd had a war, two kings, you'd marry your daughter off to the other king you just beat so he wouldn't be butthurt. You merge the power. But here's the deal. Trump's done that in business, and I understand his smarts. This isn't business. This is cutthroat globalist politics. He lets weasels in the hen house. They're going to try to assassinate him. No, I mean, that's the point. He would argue that he's going to try and keep his enemies closer. But you could see, just with the reaction on Twitter, an absolute deluge of opposition. Never Romney was trending. That's when Kellyanne Conway had to come out and basically disavow, to some extent, the fact that the Romney was a done deal as Secretary of State. But the, the major point is, they still think they've got a chance of keeping Trump out of the presidency. This is not a done deal until January. And we I saw totally it with agree. Brexit. I uh, the Electoral College doesn't happen until, what, December 20th? And then we've got all the way up until the 18th to 19th uh, with his inauguration. And, and, Paul, this is key what you just said. Trump needs to know that just because they've seated him as 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 – President-elect, just because uh, the people are behind him, the globalists are absolutely criminal. And ladies and gentlemen, they're at least going to try to cripple him politically and bring out a bunch of evidence that the Russians or the Easter bunnies or somebody else uh, hacked in these – hacked in these uh, crossover states like Pennsylvania and Ohio and uh, Wisconsin and, and Michigan. Notice they're going after all the places that had very, very narrow victories. But as you pointed out, Hillary won in the other states where, where we know she stole it by even smaller margins. Jill Stein is caught 110% red freaking handed, ladies and gentlemen, that she's only doing recounts in states to overturn Trump. This is outrageous. I say the whole thing's a fraud. The whole thing is illegitimate. I say you can't have recounts unless the other states that were in question get recounted as well. This is absolutely ridiculous. They're only recounting states to make up a bunch of evidence to try to then politically unseat Donald Trump. This is incredible. And now, Alex, people are calling for observers to be at the site of these recounts. And you know for sure that Clinton's people are going to be there. So why not? I think that's a great idea. But I mean, we're here five months now after Brexit. Brexit hasn't happened, okay? First they said it was going to be March. Now they're saying that's not even going to happen where they trigger the initial thing where then it takes two years to have Brexit. So don't count your chickens before they've hatched. They tried to send death threats to electors across the country. That didn't work. They tried to have riots on the streets funded by George Soros. That didn't work. They're desperate. They're still out there every day saying we can still stop this. We can still stop this. And now this recount is happening, and everybody's laid back, and it's like, oh, this is just theater, this is not a big deal. They've already announced in Wisconsin it's going to happen, okay? They're going to have their people there. Top and Democrats, as said, top Democrats, top Democratic donors did not just give seven mil in two days to Jill Stein to target only states that Trump narrowly won to play games, folks. They're not playing games. They mean business. Their plan is to then at least – show that Trump supposedly stole these states and then have a bunch of Black Lives Matters people and communists activate and start burning stuff down. And I want to explain something. I've never seen communists in Ohio, in Texas, in California, in New York that I've witnessed with my own eyeballs this year come out of the woodwork like roaches when a house is burning down or rats. These people are marching up and down the streets in Austin with guns saying we're going to kill cops, kill cops. Now, that is an armed group with guns saying kill people, and they are protected by the government. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if I march down the street with a firearm aimed at the ground un, without one in the chamber, it is my right to exercise it to prove I have that right. But I'm not out there saying kill cops. And this is not some ass-kicking or ass-kissing, uh, 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 having a Freudian slip, comment to police. The police are good. They're bad. They're just normal people like us. But there are local governments that are rule and law. This is Soros and the globalists trying to openly overthrow our country. It is completely transparent. These people know they were about to bring the country down. They almost had us in the guillotine. They almost were going to have their Supreme Court justices. They almost had our guns. They almost had everything. And now they're turning their PSYOP up on turbo charge. That's why we've got to all be behind Donald Trump unless he deviates massively. And then even if that happens, Lord knows what's happening to his family. We have to understand the real globalist threat tried to keep him out. They're our enemies, and we've got to keep our eye on them. Now, down the road, Trump goes sideways. We'll keep him in line. Already he's backing away from Romney. That's a good thing. But that's the system pressuring him, saying, we'll protect you. Merge with us. You know, the, you're the president now. They're threatening to not give him the, the employees he needs. They're threatening for agencies to basically go on strike. I mean, uh, Trump is the man in the arena. And, Paul, I want to go back to what you, you were just saying. Ladies and gentlemen, they are activating their terror forces. They are activating their burn down the city's forces. They're activating the communists. These people wouldn't be hitting the streets after decades of being prepared behind the scenes if the New World Order wasn't seconds away from false flags, starting wars, you name it. Trump is 54 days from the presidency. We need to be praying for America, praying for the republic. I knew that once the election was over, I couldn't take a break or take a rest because this is a time of quickening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I want to ask the crew this. Uh, do you guys have the video that's on InfoWars.com that I asked for earlier? Yes. Okay, it's up on InfoWars.com. It is one of the most important videos that we have ever had, and I'll tell you right now, I've been thinking and praying about what's happening with Trump. I've been watching. I, I, I have seen what he's saying he's going to do, what he's preparing to do. That's all very, very positive. I give him a 97 on that. Who he's been appointing or who he's announcing for confirmation, I give him a 75. But the real test begins once he gets into office. Now, last night, and I don't normally talk like this, but it's the way I privately operate sometimes, I'm almost always completely decisive. My gut's never wrong, and my gut tells me, Donald Trump is real. Donald Trump is amazing. Donald Trump is a patriot. But I, my gut was they're going to try to steal it. They did try to steal it. And my gut was it isn't over. They're going to pull something big. Just what Paul just said. They are doing it now. I'm so excited I can hardly talk. And I prayed to God last night. And I, and I said, God, just show me a sign that Trump is, 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 is 100%. My gut, my spirit's telling me he is. Tell me what I do. Tell me what I say to the patriots then because you know, if I sit there and say stay by Trump when he's not perfect, they're going to think I've sold out. What do I do? Uh, you know, God, please give me the integrity to understand what to do to always be on the right side. And I started thinking Trump is going to expose false flags. Trump is going to expose the, the criminals behind the government. Trump has Trump cards. Trump has Trump cards. And I'm laying there in bed at midnight, not able to sleep. And I just keep thinking Trump has Trump cards. I got up this morning. I got ready. I came in here. I've been up since you know, 6 a.m., made breakfast for the kids. I walked in here. We're going to skip this network break so we have more time, folks. And, I, and, I, and I'm about to get ready to come on 10 minutes before, 15 minutes before I come on with you. And I turned on InfoWars.com, and I hit refresh, and there was the video. There was the video. And I said, what on earth is this? I've never seen this. Watch this viral video of Trump on 9-11. Whoever posted this to InfoWars, great job uh, from our crew today. But uh, we need to really do another article on this, give it another headline. This is sensational. This is so key. And I don't want to get metaphysical here, folks, but God's real. Providence is real. I just kept thinking Trump is going to expose government-sponsored terror. He's going to expose the Saudis. His Trump card is false flags. He will expose the false flags, but he's got to get into office. Guess what I then saw, Paul, when I watched the video? I turned you down in the background. I was listening to you. It was like, it was like 11, uh, 10 Central. And guess what I watched in the three-minute video, Paul Watson? Well, it's the video up on InfoWars where Trump is talking about the planes hitting the World Trade Center, and he says basically there had to be bombs in there that were exploded at the same time because those steel beams, you would just not see what you saw on 9-11 with the planes going into the towers, and that's a video that I'd never seen before, and it's, it's amazing to see it now all these years later. Well, again, it tells you he wasn't on the inside of the New York scam. He wasn't on, side, uh, on the inside of the mafia scam was involved because within 30 minutes of it happening, they had – 
plain closed, obvious operatives wearing ball caps to cover their eyes, all over TV saying, oh, it fell because of a pancake effect and the fires, we can steal, and then they'd walk off camera. They had staged interviews, which we've now proven they've done, with guys in baseball caps, clearly CIA or above CIA. The CIA, of course, was based in Building 7, the Solomon's Brother building. And, and, and I was li- this is another sign that Trump, this is so incredible, he explained, and I've studied the buildings, obviously, and had top engineers on, were the strongest in the world because they were the tallest at that time to be built, so they were scared, so they overbuilt them. He basically said that the beams are so close together he's, you know, in the windows, they're like slits. He said, he said that it is the strongest buildings in the world and that it is impossible for it to fall from fire and that a plane wouldn't even be able to go through it without huge explosives in the plane and inside the building, which is what the firefighters said. It's what the engineers said. When he said that in, in, um, in 2001, Donald J. Trump had already built over 200 buildings, including some of them 60 and 70 stories. So he, he literally is an on-the-ground engineer, not just an economist, building buildings with his dad since he was three years old, on the work sites, living on the work sites. That's why he's such a regular guy. That's why he's got street smarts as, uh, as well, all the fights and stuff he got in at the work sites as a kid. And his dad was a good dad and let him get beat up and stuff. That's all the inside baseball on Trump. And I'm like, my dad let me get beat up. People think that's abusive. It's actually a good thing. and make your kid tough. But the whole ball of wax, folks, is Donald J. Trump here, ladies and gentlemen, literally laying out basically it's an inside job. Day one, showing he wasn't part of it. And so much of New York was, and I've prayed about that. We've brought up the fact of what's you know, happened in New York, but so many of the bigwigs were in on it, the stand down, the Saudis. That's why he went after the Saudis. It's why he threatened Jeb Bush with 9-11 truth. We got messages. I don't want to say too much of this because the media will get, go crazy with it, but let's just say this. We were obviously exposing 9-11. Trump was exposing at the same time. It really shook up the power structure. And let me tell you, Hillary was forced to stand down that night because of WikiLeaks. More pedophile stuff was going to come out. They were going to contest the election. She was stealing. Uh, they knew that it was a tsunami, so she was there in the headlights and basically got sedated by her own people that understood it would bring down the whole Democratic Party. Uh, the pedophilia came out. So the Democrats all know that this happened. They thought they'd coup America. They didn't. We won. We defeated their fraud. People inside who understand their whole system is going to come down, and we mean business, backed off because they know we're not backing off. But now the, 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 the criminals that weren't at the uh, uh, vortex of this have tried to reconstitute their operations to try to steal it again. And I will give you this warning, you bastards. You're not, you're no, you're not going to bankrupt our country. You're not going to leave the borders wide open. You're not going to sell us out of the Saudis and the communist Chinese. We're not going to have the communist Chinese telling us what to do. But notice the communist Chinese were in the Wall Street Journal last week and the New York Times telling us you will shut down the alt media. You will control your people. I mean, folks, we are ganged up on by the communist Chinese, the Saudi Arabians, uh, the bunch of EU globalists, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and a bunch of scum. And Trump, by the way, is announcing for his Treasury Secretary and other folks a whole bunch of hardcore, anti-NAFTA, GATT, independent billionaire Americans that nobody's ever heard of. Uh, they try to announce in these guys. These are guys I happen to know from high-level folks behind the scenes that have been involved trying to finance the liberty movement. Boy, I wish they'd have sent me some money over the years. It's great to be the tip of spear and get nothing. But the point is, and in fact, that was some positive stuff I wanted to get into. I'm brainstorming here. Some of these new appointments he's announcing in banking and things are hardcore uh, 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 anti globals Can you hear me, Paul? Yeah, go ahead. Good, good. I'm sorry, but my, my, my phone was uh, cutting out. But uh, look, I know I'm ranting here, folks. It's because this is history happening. I'm going to play this clip uh, here in a moment. But first, I've got to say this. We can't fund this operation without your help. And today, all the Black Friday specials on colloidal silver, 50% off, Supermel Vitality, 30% off, uh, the hair, nail, and skin formula that's already super uh, discounted, 30% off. Everything is 30 to 50% off today. 50% off of oil silver. We very rarely do that, only maybe once a year. That's going for Black Friday, a great way to stock up on that. Uh, also, we have free shipping store-wide only today with promo code FREE, because we can't give it to everybody. But the people listening to the show today and the folks watching this later on YouTube and Facebook, you get uh, free shipping on top of that. We can't do it for everybody because it's such a lost leader that we'll lose money if everybody does it. But just for the hardcore listeners listening on the day after Thanksgiving, uh, FREE, F-R-E-E, at checkout, we need your prayers. 
We need your support. We need everybody to also just spread the word about our videos, our articles, because we're climbing, 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 climbing to 126 on Quantcast, bigger than BBC, bigger than the New York Times. That's not rhetoric, folks. That's happening. But we're now in the target of Obama and the globalists saying next move is they're going to, quote, shut down the fake media. That means us. That means you. So we've got to grow even faster. These criminals aren't going to let us take this country back without a fight. So listen to me. When we talk about grand strategies, when we talk about hardcore stuff going on, when we talk about inside baseball taking place, you have no idea the effect you're having, how powerful you are, folks, how powerful your prayers are. You have no idea the stuff I know that I'm not at liberty to tell you here on air. But understand, Donald Trump on the day of 9-11 was on local at NBC9. People are going to the archives now, digging up stuff on Trump and, and, and the stuff they try to use against him. I, I'm, I'm told this originally surfaced with them a few weeks ago, but didn't get any traction, trying to say, oh, look, he's a 9-11 truther. Now it blows up in their face again. Trump understands how the whole thing works. So let's go ahead and play this clip from 15 years ago on 9-11 as the towers had collapsed on New York's Channel 9. Here it is. <laughs> Donald, you, you're probably the best known builder, uh, particularly of, of, of great buildings in the city. There's a great deal of question about whether or not the damage and, and the ultimate destruction of the buildings was caused by the airplanes, by architectural defect, or possibly by bombs or, or aftershocks. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it was an architectural defect. You know, the World Trade Center was always known as a very, very strong building. Don't forget, that took a big bomb in the basement. Now, the basement is the most vulnerable place because that's your foundation. And it withstood that. And I got to see that area about three or four days after it took place because one of my structural engineers actually took me for a tour because he did the building. And I said, I can't believe it. The building was standing solid and half of the columns were blown out. I mean, so this was an unbelievably powerful building. Uh, if you know anything about structure, it was one of the first buildings that was built from the outside. The steel, the reason the World Trade Center had such narrow windows is that in between all the windows, you had the steel on the outside. So you had the steel on the outside of the building. That's why when I first looked, and you had big, heavy I-beams. When I first looked at it, I couldn't believe it because there was a hole we're going we're gonna to go to break, come back and play it again, and I'm going to punch out here and let Paul Watson t t to take over. But, Paul, I I'm not kidding. I was literally praying for God to show me whether Trump was totally for real. And, 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 and can you believe that false flag came to mind, that he would expose it? And here it is. I tell it's you. an amazing video. We'll get back oh. to play the rest of it after the break. Stay tuned. This is the Alex Jones Show Live.